Good afternoon. If you don't find it difficult, subscribe to the channel, please. This will motivate me to work on further useful videos. Thank you for your subscription. Today I would like to introduce you the next pharmacology lecture, Drugs Acting on Endocrine System, Hormones and Related Drugs, Part 2. But before the lecture, I would like to ask you to join the donations to the Ukrainian army to fight against the aggressor. The whole world is witnessing what is happening in Ukraine, and any donation will help the Ukrainian military forces in this difficult time. You can donate any amount to the Come Back Alive Foundation using the links on the slide and in the video description, or you can make a donation using PayPal service to this YouTube channel, and I will send all your donations to help the Ukrainian army. Links to donations are located in the description of this video. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine. Lecture plan. Corticosteroids, androgens and anabolic steroids, estrogens, progestins and contraceptives. Let's start from corticosteroids. Adrenals. The adrenal cortex secretes steroidal hormones, which have glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoid, and weakly androgenic activities. Conventionally, the term corticosteroid or corticoid includes natural gluco and mineralocorticoids and their synthetic analogs. The corticosteroids, both gluco and mineralo, are 21 carbon compounds having a cyclopentanoperhydrophenantrine or steroid nucleus. They are synthesized in the adrenal cortical cells from cholesterol. By the middle of the 19th century, it was demonstrated that adrenal glands were essential for life. Later, it was appreciated that the cortex was more important than the medulla. A number of steroidal active principles were isolated and their structures were elucidated by Kendall and his co-workers in the 1930s. However, the gate to their great therapeutic potential was opened by Hench in 1949, who obtained striking improvement in rheumatoid arthritis by using cortisone. The Nobel Prize was awarded the very next year to Kendall, Reichstein and Hench. Hormones produced in adrenal cortex, glucocorticoids, hydrocortisone, mineralocorticoids, aldosterone, and sex steroids, dehydroepiandrosterone in adrenal medulla, adrenaline and noradrenaline. And below you can see the simplified depiction of the pathways of adrenal steroid hormone biosynthesis. Let's revise the concept of hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis, which is very important for today's lecture understanding. Adrenal steroidogenesis takes place under the influence of adrenocorticotropic hormone, which makes more cholesterol available for conversion to pregnenolone and induces steroidogenic enzymes. Since adrenal cortical cells store only minute quantities of the hormones, rate of release is governed by the rate of biosynthesis. The circulating corticosteroids inhibit adrenocorticotropic hormone release from pituitary as well as corticotropin-releasing hormone production from hypothalamus, explained in the previous lecture, and thus provide negative feedback regulation of the hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis. And on the right side you can see the schematic depiction of hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis, which was also presented in the previous lecture. Synthesis of corticosteroids. The normal rate of secretion of the two principal corticoids in man is hydrocortisone 0.01 to 0.02 daily, nearly half of this in the few morning hours, and aldosterone 0.30125 or 0.125 mg daily. The corticoids have widespread actions. They maintain fluid electrolyte, cardiovascular and energy substrate homeostasis and functional status of skeletal muscles and nervous system. They prepare the body to withstand the effects of all kinds of noxious stimuli and stress. Mechanism of action of corticosteroids on cellular level Corticosteroids penetrate cells and bind to a high-affinity cytoplasmic receptor protein. Then a structural change occurs in the steroid receptor complex that allows its migration into the nucleus and binding to glucocorticoid response element on the chromatin. Then transcription of specific mRNA. Then regulation of protein synthesis. 
This process takes at least 30 to 60 minutes. Then effects of corticosteroids are not immediate, and once the appropriate proteins are synthesized, the effects persist much longer than the steroid itself. In many tissues, the overall effect is catabolic, which means inhibition of protein synthesis. This may be the consequence of steroid-directed synthesis of an inhibitory protein. Since adrenal cortical cells store only minute quantities of the hormones, the rate of release is governed by the rate of biosynthesis. The circulating corticosteroids inhibit adrenocorticotropic hormone release from the pituitary, as well as corticotropin-releasing factor production from the hypothalamus, and thus provide negative feedback regulation of the hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis. Some actions of corticoids are exerted more rapidly, like inhibition of adrenocorticotropic hormone release from pituitary. These may be mediated by a cell membrane receptor or a different mechanism not involving protein synthesis. In the next slides, I would like to discuss with you mineralocorticoid action of corticoids and glucocorticoid action of corticoids. Let's start from mineralocorticoid action of corticoids. The principal mineralocorticoid action is an enhancement of sodium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule in the kidney and an increase of potassium ions and hydrogen ions excretion. The main adverse effect of excessive mineralocorticoid action is fluid retention and hypertension. Natural and some synthetic glucocorticoids have significant mineralocorticoid activity responsible for side effects like edema, the progressive rise of blood pressure, hypokalemia and alkalosis. The diuretic-induced hypokalemia is aggravated by mineralocorticoid excess. The next is glucocorticoid action of corticoids. Corticoids have some direct and some permissive actions. While they do not themselves produce an effect, their presence facilitates other hormones to exert that action. They do not have any effect on blood pressure, but the pressor action of adrenaline is markedly blunted in their absence. Glucocorticoid, effects on carbohydrate, protein and fat metabolism and other actions are inseparably linked to this. Now let's take a look in detail on all glucocorticoid actions of corticoids. First, carbohydrate and protein metabolism. Second, fat metabolism. Third, calcium metabolism. Fourth, water excretion. Fifth, cardiovascular system. Sixth, skeletal muscles. Seventh, central nervous system. 8. Stomach 9. Lymphoid tissue and blood cells 10. Inflammatory responses and 11. Immunological and allergic responses First is glucocorticoid action of corticoids on carbohydrates and protein metabolism. Glucocorticoids promote glycogen deposition in the liver, they are assayed on the basis of this action, by inducing hepatic glycogen synthase and promoting gluconeogenesis. They inhibit glucose utilization by peripheral tissues. All this increases glucose release from liver and results in hyperglycemia, resistance to insulin and a diabetes-like state. They also cause protein breakdown and amino acid, which are used in gluconeogenesis. Excess urea is produced and leads to negative nitrogen balance. Mobilization of protein from peripheral tissues is responsible for side effects like muscle wasting, lympholysis, loss of osteoid from bone and thinning of the skin. The next is action on fat metabolism. Glucocorticoids promote lipolysis due to glucagon, growth hormone, adrenaline and tyroxine. Cyclic adenosine monophosphate induces the breakdown of triglycerides is enhanced. Subcutaneous tissue over extremities loses fat, but on the face, neck and shoulder, producing more forming moon face, fish mouth and buffalo hump. Explanation. Because peripheral adipocytes are less sensitive to insulin and more sensitive to corticosteroid-facilitated lipolytic action of growth hormone and adrenaline, reason, the different expression of isoenzyme, 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, type 1 and type 2. Action on calcium metabolism. Glucocorticoids inhibit intestinal absorption and enhance renal excretion of calcium. 
loss of osteoid, decreased formation and increased resorption, indirectly results in loss of calcium from bone, producing negative calcium balance. Spongy bones, vertebra, ribs, pelvis, etc. are more sensitive. Action on water excretion. The effect on water excretion is independent of the action on sodium ions transport. The capacity to excrete a water load is markedly reduced. Action on cardiovascular system. Glucocorticoids restrict capillary permeability and maintain the tone of arterioles and myocardial contractility. They play a permissive role in the pressure action of adrenaline and angiotensin. Action on skeletal muscles. Weakness occurs in both hypo and hypercorticism. Hypocorticism, diminished work capacity and weakness are primarily due to hypodynamic circulation. Hypercorticism, excess mineralocorticoid action, hypokalemia, weakness. Other, excess glucocorticoid action, muscle wasting and myopathy, weakness. Actions on CNS. Mild euphoria is quite common due to direct effect on the brain, sometimes increased motor activity, insomnia, hypomania or depression. Action on stomach, secretion of gastric acid and pepsin is increased, may aggravate peptic ulcers. Action on lymphoid tissue and blood cells. Glucocorticoids enhance the rate of destruction of lymphoid cells, T cells are more sensitive than B cells. Glucocorticoids increase the number of red blood cells, platelets, and neutrophils in circulation. They decrease lymphocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Action on inflammatory responses. The action is non-specific and covers all components and stages of inflammation. Action on immunological and allergic responses. They suppress all types of hypersensitization and allergic phenomena. Pharmacokinetics of corticosteroids. The plasma half-life of hydrocortisone is 1.5 hours. However, biological half-life is longer because of action through intracellular receptors and regulation of protein synthesis effects that persists long after the steroid is removed from the plasma. Corticosteroids are metabolized primarily by hepatic microsomal enzymes. Pathways are first. Reduction of 4-5 double bond and hydroxylation of 3 keto group. Second, reduction of 20 keto and 20 hydroxy form. Third, oxidative cleavage of 20 C side chain, only in case of compounds having a 17 hydroxy group, to yield 17 ketosteroids. These metabolites are further conjugated with glucuronic acid or sulfate and are excreted in the urine and inherency relative activity of systemic corticosteroids, specifically glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. Glucocorticoids short-acting, half-life is less than 12 hours, for example hydrocortisone, intermediate-acting, biological half-life is from 12 to 36 hours, for example prednisolone, methylprednisolone, triamcinolone and deflazacort, and long-acting, Biological half-life is more than 36 hours, dexamethasone and betametasone. Their gluco and mineralo activities and equivalent dose, which is anti-inflammatory dose. And for mineralocorticoids, the examples, desoxycorticosterone acetate, fludrocortisone and aldosterone. Their gluco and mineralo activities and equivalent salt-retaining doses. In the next slide, we will talk about the main representatives in more detail. Distinctive features of drugs Hydrocortisone or cortisol acts rapidly but has short duration of action, up to 0.1 IV bolus plus 0.1 IV infusion each 8 hours, replacement therapy orally 0.02 in the morning plus 0.01 in the afternoon, prednisolone. It is four times more potent than cortisol, from 5 to 60 mg in a day orally. Methylprednisolone, slightly more potent than cortisol and more selective, from 4 to 32 mg in a day orally. 
Triumcin alone, slightly more potent than cortisol, but highly selective, from 5 to 40 mg intramuscular or from 4 to 32 mg in a day orally. Intraarticular injection, also used topically. Dexamethasone, very potent and highly selective, long-acting, from 0.5 to 5 mg in a day orally or from 4 to 20 mg IV or IM. Betamethasone, like dexamethasone from 0.5 to 5 mg orally or from 4 to 20 mg IV or IM. Deflazacort, less potent than prednisolone. Desoxycorticosterone acetate, mineralocorticoid activity only. Fludrocortisone, potent mineralocorticoid activity and some glucocorticoid activity. And aldosterone, it is a most potent mineralocorticoid but not used clinically. It has got low bioavailability. Uses Replacement therapy in acute adrenal insufficiency, chronic adrenal insufficiency, which is Edison's disease, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia, adrenogenital syndrome. Previous uses were as a replacement therapy, and these ones are as pharmacotherapy. First of all, arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthrosis, rheumatic fever, gout, collagen diseases, severe allergic reactions, autoimmune diseases, bronchial asthma, other lung diseases, infective diseases, eye diseases, skin diseases, intestinal diseases, cerebral edema, malignancies, organ transplantation and skin allograft, septic shock, thyroid storm, for testing pituitary adrenal axis function. Adverse effects. Mineralocorticoid adverse effects, sodium and water retention, hypokalemia, alkalosis, and a progressive rise of blood pressure, not in highly selective glucocorticoids, and glucocorticoid adverse effects. Cushing's habitus, fragile skin, purple striae, hyperglycemia, muscular weakness, susceptibility to infection, delayed healing, peptic ulceration, osteoporosis, posterior subcapsular cataract, glaucoma, growth retardation, fetal abnormalities, psychiatric disturbances, suppression of hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Contraindications, peptic ulcer, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, viral and fungal infections, tuberculosis, osteoporosis, herpes simplex keratitis, psychosis, epilepsy, chronic heart failure, renal failure. And the last slide about corticosteroids is glucocorticoid antagonist. The antiprogestin mifepristone acts as a glucocorticoid receptor antagonist as well. In Cushing's syndrome, it can suppress the manifestations of corticosteroid excess, but blockade of feedback adrenocorticotropic hormone inhibition leads to oversecretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone, more hydrocortisone is produced. It is indicated only for inoperable cases of adrenal carcinoma and in patients with ectopic adrenocorticotropic hormone secretion. The next part of our lecture is androgens and anabolic steroids. Androgens, male sex hormones. Testosterone. Its endocrine function was established by Berthold in 1849. Testosterone was isolated as the testicular hormone, its structure was worked out and it was synthetically prepared by the year 1935. Testes of adult male produce from 5 to 12 mg of testosterone daily, a part of which is converted in extraglandular tissues to the more active dehydrotestosterone DHT. Actions. First, Sex organs and secondary sex characters, androgenic, second, testes, third, skeleton and skeletal muscles, anabolic, and fourth, erythropoietins. First, sex organs and secondary sex characters, which is androgenic action. Testosterone is responsible for all the changes that occur in a boy at puberty. Growth of genitals, penis, scrotum, seminal vesicles, prostate, Growth of hair, 
pubic, axillary, beard mustache, body hair, and male pattern of its distribution, thickening of the skin, which becomes grease due to proliferation and increased activity of sebaceous gland, especially on the face. The duct often gets blocked and infection occurs resulting in acne. Subcutaneous fat is lost and veins look prominent. The larynx grows and the voice deepens. Behavioral effects are increased physical vigor, aggressiveness and penile erections. Male libido appears to be activated by testosterone directly. Second testes. Testosterone is needed for normal spermatogenesis and in the maturation of spermatozoa. A high concentration of testosterone is attained locally in the spermatogenic tubules by diffusion from the neighboring Leydig cells and stimulates spermatogenesis. Third, skeleton and skeletal muscles, which is anabolic action. Testosterone is responsible for the pubertal spurt of growth in boys and a smaller extent in girls. There is a rapid bone growth both in thickness as well as in length. After puberty, the epiphysis fuse and linear growth come to halt. Estradiol, produced from testosterone and not testosterone itself, is responsible for the fusion of epiphysis in boys as well as in girls. Moreover, estradiol largely mediates the effect of testosterone on bone mineralization. Testosterone also promotes muscle building, especially if aided by exercise. There is the accretion of nitrogen, minerals and water. Body weight increases rapidly and more protoplasm is built. Testosterone given to patients prone to salt and water retention may develop edema. And the fourth action of testosterone is on erythropoietins. Testosterone accelerates erythropoietin's erythropoiesis by increasing erythropoietin production and probably direct action on heme synthesis. Men have higher hematocrit than women. The next is regulation and production of sex steroids in male. In the liver and many target cells, 5-alpha reductase enzyme converts testosterone to the more potent androgen dehydrotestosterone DHT, which combines more avidly with the androgen receptor AR. The aromatase enzyme in testes, liver and adipose tissue converts some testosterone into estradiol, which exerts certain actions in male target cells by combining with estrogen receptor and is probably important for feedback inhibition of gonadotropins, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, as well as that of gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. Now let's take a look on mechanism of action of testosterone. Testosterone can largely be regarded as the circulating prohormone in most target cells. The 4-5 double bond is reduced, producing dehydrotestosterone, which binds more avidly with the cytoplasmic androgen receptor, and this complex is more active than the testosterone receptor complex in combining with DNA. No subtypes of androgen receptor are known. Both genital and non-genital muscle bone cells express the same androgen receptor. After combining with androgen response elements of the target genes, DNA transcription is enhanced, repressed, with the help of co-activators or co-repressors, which may be tissue-specific. The effects are expressed through modification of protein synthesis. And below you can see the additional information about 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which was mentioned in the previous slide. Testosterone itself appears to be the active hormone at certain sites. Fetal genital rudiments, hypothalamus pituitary site involved in feedback regulation, erythropoietic cells, spermatogenic cells in testes. Preparations and doses. Testosterone 0.025 IM daily to twice weekly. Testosterone propionate 0.025 to 0.05 intramuscular daily to twice weekly. Depot Testosterone propionate 0.025 plus testosterone enantate 0.1 intramuscular weekly.
Also, testosterone propionate 0,02 plus testosterone phenyl propionate 0,04 plus testosterone isocuproate 0,04 IM every 2-3 weeks. Uses testicular failure, hypopituitarism, AIDS-related muscle wasting, hereditary angioneurotic edema, aging, idiopathic male infertility. The next are anabolic steroids. These are synthetic androgens with supposedly higher anabolic and lower androgenic activity. The anabolic androgenic activity ratio is determined by injecting the drug in castrated rats and measuring the increase in weight of levator uni muscle to that of ventral prostate. The anabolic androgen ratio of testosterone is considered as 1. The anabolic selectivity of these steroids is modest with ratios between 1 and 3 in the red model and probably still lower in men. The anabolic effects are similar to that of testosterone and are mediated through the same receptor as the androgenic effects. Preparations and doses Methandienone 0.002 to 0.005 orally once twice daily Children 0,04 mg kg a day. Pay attention that this is 2 mg and this is 5 mg. For children it is much more or less because it is 0,04 mg kg a day. The next is nandrolone phenylpropionate from 0,01 to 0,05. For children 0,01 once or twice weekly. The next is nandrolone decanoate. 0,025 to 0,1 intramuscular every 3 weeks. The next is oxymetolone from 0,005 to 0,01. For children, 0,1 mg each kilogram once daily. And stanozolol from 2 to 6 mg a day. Side effects of anabolic steroids. Virilism, acne, Frequent sustained and often painful erections in the beginning of therapy. Subsides spontaneously after some time. Oligozoospermia. Precocious puberty. Premature sexual behavior. Salt retention and edema. Holesthetic jaundice. Hepatic carcinoma. Gynecomastia. Lowering in high-density lipoproteins and rise in low-density lipoproteins levels, especially with 17-alpha-alkylated analogs. Uses Catabolic states Osteoporosis Suboptimal growth in boys Hypoplastic, hemolytic and malignancy-associated anemia To enhance physical ability in athletes Considered illegal and the next part of our lecture is estrogens, progestins, and contraceptives. Estrogens. Classification. First of all, estrogens, which are subdivided into natural, estradiol, estrone, and estriol, and synthetic, which are also subdivided into steroidal, ethyl estradiol, mestranol, and tibolone, and non-steroidal, diethylstilbestrol, hexestrol, and dienestrol. The next is anti-estrogen, clomiphene citrate. The next is selective estrogen receptor down regulator, fulvestrant. The next is selective estrogen receptor modulators, tamoxifen citrate, toremiphene and raloxifene, and aromatase inhibitors, letrozole, anastrozole, and xmstain. Let's start from natural estrogens. Estradiol is the major estrogen secreted by the ovary and synthesized in the graphene follicle, corpus luteum, and placenta from cholesterol. And in here you can see the schematic depictions of synthesis of estradiol and other natural estrogens. In the next slide I will explain its synthesis. Estradiol is rapidly oxidized in the liver to estrone, which is hydroxylated to form estriol. All three are active and circulated in blood, but estradiol is the most potent estrogen. 
Small quantity from 2 to 20 micrograms in a day of estradiol is derived in human males also from aromatization of testosterone in the testes and extraglandular tissues. Synthetic estrogens. Natural estrogens are inactive orally and have a short duration of action due to rapid metabolism in the liver. Synthetic compounds overcome this. These are steroidal, etinylestradiol, mestranol and tibolone, nonsteroidal, diethylstilbestrol or stilbestrol, hexestrol and dienestrol. The non-steroidal compounds assume a trans configuration and sterically resemble natural estrogens. You can see it on the left side. Regulation of secretion. The daily secretion of estrogens in menstruating women varies from 10 to 100 micrograms depending on the phase of the cycle. Its secretion starts from the graphene follicle under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone and the blood levels rises gradually during the follicular phase. Due to the modest preovulatory follicle stimulating hormone surge, estrogens further rise transiently. After ovulation, corpus luteum continues to secrete estrogens till about two days before menstruation. Estrogens exercise feedback inhibition of follicle stimulating hormone, also of luteinizing hormone at higher concentrations, by direct action on pituitary as well as through hypothalamus. During pregnancy, placenta secreted large quantities of estrogens, mainly estrone and estriol, reaching a peak of up to 30 mg a day at term. Their level declines sharply after delivery. In postmenopausal women, daily production of estrogen has been estimated as from 2 to 10 micrograms, derived primarily by extraglandular aromatization of adrenal androgens. Actions of estrogens First, sex organs. Bring about pubertal changes in the female, including the growth of uterus, fallopian tubes and vagina proliferation of endometrium in the preovulatory phase. In the absence of progesterone, anovulatory cycles, withdrawal of estrogens alone produces menstruation. The normal event which triggers menstruation is progesterone withdrawal. Second, secondary sex characters. Estrogens produced at puberty cause the growth of breasts, the proliferation of ducts and stroma, accumulation of fat, the pubic and axillary hair appear, and feminine body contours and behavior are influenced. And third, metabolic effects. Estrogens are anabolic but weaker than testosterone. Mechanism of action of estrogens. Estrogens bind to specific nuclear receptors in the target cells and produce effects by regulating protein synthesis. Estrogens receptors have been demonstrated in female sex organs, breast, pituitary, liver, bone, blood vessels, heart, CNS, and in certain hormone-responsive breast carcinoma cells. The estrogens receptors is analogs to other steroid receptors. Agonists binding to the ligand binding domain brings about receptor dimerization with estrogen response elements of target genes. Gene transcription is promoted through certain coactivator proteins. On binding an estrogen antagonist, the receptor assumes a different conformation and interacts with other corepressor protein, inhibiting gene transcription. Two distinct estrogen receptors are designated alpha estrogen receptors and beta estrogen receptors. Pharmacokinetics Estrogens are well absorbed orally and transdermally, but natural estrogens are inactive by the oral route due to rapid metabolism in the liver. Estradiol esters, injected IM, are slowly absorbed and exert prolonged action. Natural estrogens in circulation are largely plasma proteins bound to sex hormone binding globulin as well as to albumin. Estradiol is converted to estrone and vice versa on the liver. Estriol is derived from estrone. All three are conjugated with glucuronic acid and sulfate, excreted in urine and bile. Considerable enterohepatic circulation occurs due to deconjugation in the intestines and reabsorption. Ultimate disposal occurs mostly in the urine.
Ethyl estradiol is metabolized very slowly. Half-life is from 12 to 24 hours. It is orally active and more potent. Preparations and dose of estrogens. Estradiol benzoate, cypionate, enantate, valerate, 0.0015 to 0.01 intramuscular. Conjugated estrogens from 0.30625 to 0,20125 a day orally. Ethyl estradiol 0,02 to 0,2 mg a day orally. Mestranol, demethylation in liver gives ethyl estradiol from 0,1 to 0,2 mg a day. Estriol succinate from 0,004 to 0,008 daily. Phosphestrol tetrasodium from 0,6 to 1.2 slow intravenous and DNSTROL 0,01% topically in vagina. Adverse effects First, suppression of libido, gynecomastia and feminization when given to males. Second, fusion of epiphysis and reduction of adult stature when given to children. Third, in postmenopausal women, Increase the risk of irregular bleeding and endometrial carcinoma 5 to 15 fold. A progestin given concurrently blocks risks. Fourth, estrogens can accelerate the growth of existing breast cancer, but low dose estrogen only HRT doesn't appear to increase the risk of developing new breast cancer. Fifth, long term estrogen therapy doubles the incidence of gallstones. Benign hepatomas are more common in women taking estrogens in their teens and twenties. 6. Migraine, epilepsy and endometriosis may be worsened by estrogens. And 7. Stilbestrol given to pregnant women, especially during the first trimester, as a test of pregnancy or otherwise, increased the incidence of vaginal and cervical carcinoma in female offspring in childhood or early adulthood. Uses. First, hormone replacement therapy, menopausal symptoms and atrophic changes, osteoporosis and fractures, cardiovascular events, cognitive function and dementia, cancer, gallstone, migraine. Second, senile vaginitis. Third, delayed puberty in girls, primary hypogonadism. Fourth, dysmenorrhea. Fifth, acne. Sixth, dysfunctional uterine. Seventh, carcinoma prostate. The next are antiestrogens. Clomiphene citrate induces gonadotropin secretion in women by blocking estrogenic feedback inhibition of the pituitary. The amount of luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone released at each secretory pulse is increased. In response, the ovaries enlarge and ovulation occurs. Antagonism of peripheral actions of estrogen results in hot flashes. Endometrium and cervical mucus may be modified. Selective estrogen receptor down regulator is the next one. Fulvestrant is the first member of a distinct class of estrogen receptor ligands called selective estrogen receptor down regulators or pure estrogen antagonists that has been introduced for the treatment of locally advanced or metastatic estrogen receptor positive breast cancer in postmenopausal women which has stopped responding to tamoxifen. In contrast to tamoxifen, it inhibits estrogen receptor dimerization so that estrogen receptor interaction with DNA is prevented and receptor degradation is enhanced. The estrogen receptor is thus downregulated, resulting in more complete suppression of estrogen receptor responsive gene function. This feature, along with its higher affinity for the estrogen receptor, probably accounts for its efficacy in tamoxifen resistant cases. The next is selective estrogen receptor modulators. These are drugs that exert estrogenic as well as anti-estrogenic action in a tissue selective manner. Tamoxifen citrate, 20 mg a day in one or two doses, maximum 40 mg a day. Trade names Tamoxifen, Mamofen, Tamodex, 10 and 20 mg tablets. And Raloxifen, 60 mg in a day. Trade names Bonmax, Ralotab as serum, 60 mg tablets. 
and also aromatase inhibitors. Aromatizing of a ring of testosterone and androstenedione is the final and key step in the production of estrogens, estradiol estrone, in the body. Drugs are letrozole, anastrozole, and exemestain. And in here you can see the comparative properties of tamoxifen and letrozole, anastrozole. You can pause this slide and check this table in more detail. The next is progestins. These are the substances that convert the estrogen-primed proliferative endometrium to secretory and maintain pregnancy in animals spayed after conception. Progestin equals to favoring pregnancy. Progestins are divided into natural progestins, progesterone, and synthetic progestins, which are subdivided into progesterone derivatives, medroxyprogesterone acetate, Megastrol acetate, dihydrogesterone, hydroxyprogesterone capro 8, and 19 nortestosterone derivatives, noretindrone or noretisterone, linestrenol or etinylestrenol, allylestrenol, levonorgestrel, desogestrel, norgestimate, and gestodine. Actions of progestins Uterus, cervix, vagina, breast, CNS, body temperature, respiration, metabolism, and pituitary. Adverse effects of progestins. Breast engorgement, headache, rise in body temperature, edema, esophageal reflux, acne, and mood swings may occur with higher doses. Irregular bleeding or amenorrhea can occur if progestin is given continuously. The 19 nortestosterone derivatives lower plasma high-density lipoproteins levels may promote aterogenesis, but progesterone and its derivatives have no such effect. Long-term use of progestin in HRT may increase the risk of breast cancer, blood sugar may rise and diabetes may be precipitated by the long-term use of potent agents like levonorgestrel, Intramuscular injection of progesterone is painful. Given in early pregnancy, progestins can cause masculinization of female fetuses and other congenital abnormalities. The use of progestin for the diagnosis of pregnancy is contraindicated. Uses of progestins As a contraceptive, Hormone replacement therapy HRT, which we mentioned before, dysfunctional uterine bleeding, endometriosis, premenstrual syndrome tension, threatened habitual abortion, endometrial carcinoma. The next is impeded androgen progestin, danazole, orally active isoxazole derivative of etisterone, which has weak androgenic, anabolic, progestational and glucocorticoid activities. However, the most prominent action is suppression of gonadotropin secretion from the pituitary in both men and women, which leads to inhibition of testicular ovarian function. In menstruating women, the mid-cycle surge of follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone is suppressed, but the basal level of these gonadotropins is not much affected. In addition, danazole suppresses gonadal function directly by inhibiting steroidogenic CYP enzymes, but not the aromatase needed for estrogen production. In women, endometrial atrophy occurs over a few weeks, and amenorrhea may supervene. Danazole has also been labeled as an impeded attenuated androgen because it binds to the androgen receptor and translocates it into the nucleus to induce the production of some androgen-specific RNA. Danazole is metabolized within a half-life of 12 to 18 hours. Dose from 200 to 600 mg daily. Trade names Danazole, Ladogal, Danogen, Gonablock, 50 and 100 mg capsules. The next is antiprogestin, mifepristone. Mifepristone is given during the follicular phase. Its antiprogestin action results in attenuation of the mid-cycle gonadotropin surge from the pituitary.
This causes slowing of follicular development and delay failure of ovulation. If given during the luteal phase, it prevents secretory changes by blocking progesterone action on the endometrium. Later in the cycle, it blocks progesterone support to the endometrium and unrestrains prostaglandin release from it. This stimulates uterine contractions. The next is ulipristal. It is recently approved selective progesterone receptor modulator for use as an emergency contraceptive. It inhibits ovulation by suppressing luteinizing hormone surge as well as by direct effect on follicular rupture. In addition, its action on the endometrium can interfere with implantation. And the next are hormonal contraceptives. These are hormonal preparations used for the reversible suppression of fertility. Rock and Pincus in 1955 announced the successful use of an oral progestin for contraception, separating fertility control from coitus. It was soon discovered that the addition of a small quantity of estrogen enhanced their efficacy. Combined pills have become the most popular method of contraception, particularly because the hormone content of the pills has been reduced, minimizing the potential harm and affording other health benefits. Over 100 million women worldwide are currently using hormonal contraceptives. With these drugs, fertility can be suppressed at will for as long as desired with almost 100% confidence and complete return of fertility on discontinuation. But nowadays, hormonal contraceptives are also used to treat other medical conditions, such as polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis, adenomyosis, acne, hirsutism, amenorrhea, menstrual cramps, menstrual migraines, menorrhagia, excessive menstrual bleeding, menstruation-related or fibroid-related anemia. And in here you can see oral contraceptive preparations. The type of progestin and estrogen which they contain and their respective amounts and trade name. The first are combined pills. As you can see, they contain the fixed doses of particular progestins and fixed doses of particular estrogens. The next are phased pills. Their difference in comparison with combined pills that they contain three different doses of progestins and three different doses of estrogens. That's why they are called as phased pills. For example, 7 plus 7 plus 7 tablets. It means that in first 7 tablets in that pack will be 50 micrograms of levonorgestrel and 30 micrograms of etinyl estradiol. In the next 7 tablets there will be 75 micrograms of levonorgestrel and 40 micrograms of etinyl estradiol. And in the last 7 tablets there will be 125 micrograms of levonorgestrel and 30 micrograms of etinyl estradiol. This is the logic of phased pills. The next are postcoital pills. These tablets are taken in maximum 72 hours after accidental coitus. Their maximum effectivity is in first 24 hours. These drugs as overall and duo Luton L contain both levonorgestrel 0.25 mg and etinyl estradiol 50 micrograms. For example, Norlevo contains 1 plus 1, so 2 tablets of 0.75 levonorgestrel, which are taken first tablet as soon as possible after accidental coitus and the next one after 12 hours. And the second variant contains only one tablet of levonorgestrel 1.5 mg, for example, IPIL or No Fear 72 and others. These must be taken as one tablet as soon as possible after accidental coitus, but not later than 72 hours after it. They are maximum effective once again in the first 24 hours after accidental coitus. And mini pills. They contain only progestins, as you can see, for example, noradrenaline 0.35 mg or norgestrel 75 micrograms. They must be taken each day in the same periods of time. The next is mechanism of action of oral contraceptive preparations. Hormonal contraceptives interfere with fertility in many ways. First, inhibition of gonadotropins release from the pituitary. Second, thick cervical mucus secretion. 
Third, hyperproliferation, hypersecretion or atrophy of the endometrium. Fourth, uterine and tubal contractions. And fifth, dislodgement of just implanted blastocyst or may interfere with fertilization implantation. And here you can see effects of different forms of hormonal contraception. You can pause this slide and check this information in more detail. And here I would like to stop on some very important practical considerations of oral contraceptive preparations. First, discontinuation of all oral contraceptives results in the full return of fertility within one to two months. There may even be a rebound increase in fertility. Chances of multiple pregnancies are more if conception occurs within 2-3 cycles. With injectable preparations, the return of fertility is delayed. The cycles take several months to normalize or may not do so at all. They are to be used only if the risk of permanent infertility is acceptable. Second, if a woman on combined pills misses taking a tablet, she should be advised to take two tablets the next day and continue as usual. If more than two tablets are missed, then the course should be interrupted, an alternative method of contraception used, and the next course started on the fifth day of bleeding. Third, if pregnancy occurs during the use of hormonal contraceptives, it should be terminated by suction aspiration because the risk of malformations, genital carcinoma in female offspring and undescended testes in male offspring is increased. Fourth, while for most women a pill containing 30 micrograms of etinylestradiol is sufficient, the obese may require a pill containing 50 micrograms and only 20 micrograms may be appropriate sufficient for those with a cardiovascular risk factor as well as for those above 40 years old. Fifth, if breakthrough bleeding occurs, switch over to a pill containing a higher estrogen dose. And sixth, in women with contraindications for estrogens, a progestin-only contraceptive may be used. Adverse effects of oral contraceptives First, non-steroid side effects. Nausea, headache, breakthrough bleeding or spotting, breast discomfort. Second, side effects that appear later. Weight gain, klozma, pigmentation of cheeks, pruritus valve, carbohydrate intolerance and precipitation of diabetes, mood swings, abdominal distension. And third, serious complications. Leg vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, coronary and cerebral thrombosis, rise in blood pressure, estrogens tend to raise high-density lipoproteins, low-density lipoproteins ratio, beneficial, but progestins nullifies this benefit, Lipid profile is not significantly altered by low-dose oral contraceptives, except that triglyceride level may rise marginally, which poses no excess risk. Also genital carcinoma, benign hepatomas, and gallstones. Absolute contraindications of oral contraceptives. First, thromboembolic, coronary and cerebrovascular disease or a history of it. Second, moderate to severe hypertension, hyperlipidemia, third, active liver disease, hepatoma or jaundice during past pregnancy, fourth, suspected overt malignancy of genitals, breasts, fifth, porphyria, sixth, impending major surgery to avoid the excess risk of postoperative thromboembolism, estrogen-containing contraceptive should be stopped four weeks before surgery. Relative contraindications requiring avoidance conscious use under supervision. First, diabetes, control may be vitiated. Second, obesity. Third, smoking. Fourth, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding. Fifth, uterine leomyoma may enlarge with estrogenic preparations. Progestin only pills can be used. Sixth, mentally ill. Seventh, age about 35 years. Eighth, mild hypertension. 9th, migraine, 10, gallbladder disease. And the last in this part of the lecture is male hormonal contraception. The only way to suppress male fertility by drugs is to inhibit spermatogenesis. 
Though considerable effort has been made in this direction and effective drugs have been found, no satisfactory, acceptable solution is yet tangible. Reasons are First, complete suppression of spermatogenesis is relatively difficult without affecting other tissues. Millions of spermatozoa are released at each ejaculation versus a single ovum per month in women. Second, spermatogenesis takes 64 days. A drug that even completely inhibited spermatogenesis will take a long latent period to produce infertility. Accordingly, the return of fertility will be slow. Third, gonadotropin suppression inhibits testosterone secretion as well, resulting in loss of libido and impotence, which is unacceptable to all men and to most spouses. Fourth, risk of adverse effects. And fifth, most importantly, men don't get pregnant. Few would be ready to bear the contingency of regular medication so that their sexual partners do not become pregnant. If you watched this lecture till this moment, then you found it useful for you. The best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the channel and put like to this video. And don't forget about the donations to Ukrainian Army Forces. Appreciate it. And the last part of our lecture is examples of MCQs. Testosterone and its analogues increase the mass of skeletal muscles, allowing us to use them for the treatment of dystrophy. Due to the interaction of the hormone with what cell substance is this action caused? In here you must remember the mechanism of action of testosterone, and of course the correct answer will be nuclear receptors. A patient had been taking glucocorticoids for a long time. When the drug was withdrawn, he developed the symptoms of disease aggravation, decreased blood pressure and weakness. What is the reason of this condition? So, in here the patient was taking glucocorticoids for a long time, and then he stopped using these drugs. Please remember that the use of glucocorticoids must be stopped slowly. They cannot be stopped rapidly, because if you stop rapidly the use of glucocorticoids, then patient will see the appearance of adrenal insufficiency. A patient with infectious mononucleosis has been taking glucocorticoids for two weeks. He was brought into remission, but he fell ill with an acute attack of chronic tonsillitis. What action of glucocorticoids caused this complication? This question is connected with one of the actions of glucocorticoids, which is immunosuppressive action. Please remember that they provide this action, which is immunosuppressive. On one hand, you can use this action after organ transplantation, for example, but on the second hand, this action may provide such complications. Usage of oral contraceptives with sex hormones inhibits the secretion of hypophysial hormones. Secretion of which of the indicated hormones is inhibited while using oral contraceptives with sex hormones? As we mentioned before in the lecture, oral contraceptives will inhibit follicle-stimulating hormone. Because of a long-term drug application, such complications as osteoporosis, erosive ulcers of the mucous coat of the stomach, edemas, increase in arterial pressure, and insomnia has developed. Laboratory tests detected hypernatriemia, hypokalemia, and hyperglycemia. What drug has been applied? This question represents the picture of side effects of glucocorticoids. So our drug in here will be, of course, prednisolone. Having a serious infection, a patient needs an anabolic drug for the improvement of appetite. Which one? This MCQ is short and simple, because you simply need to find from all the drugs the one which is anabolic. And the correct one will be Retabolil. Please pay attention that Retabolil it is also one of the trade names of Nandrolone. Medicine was prescribed for the treatment of arthritis. It has the following pharmacological characteristics. It increases the production of lipomodulin reduces phospholipase A2 activity, reduces the synthesis of arachidonic acid metabolism products, cyclic endoperoxides, prostaglandins. What drug is this? And this question is connected with the mechanism of action of glucocorticoids. So in here, of course, the correct option will be prednisolone. 
A patient with rheumatoid arthritis has been using prednisolone for a long time. Why should he avoid contact with infectious patients? As we mentioned before, in here again is the connection with immunosuppressive effect of glucocorticoids. So the correct option will be owing to the development of secondary immunodeficiency. A doctor prescribed to a 60-year-old woman, after mastectomy, synthetic drug which reduced the simulative influence of estrogens upon tumor growth. Identify this drug. In here we are searching for selective estrogen receptor modulator, which is of course tamoxifen. A 25-year-old pregnant woman is admitted to the pregnancy pathology department with threatened abortion. Which drug should be prescribed to the woman? As we mentioned in the lecture, progestins are maintaining pregnancy. So we are searching in here for progestin, which is progesterone. Thank you for the attention. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and put like. Appreciate it.